watch my mouth. Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to well, you. Convincing. The 50s were a time when comedy went hand in hand with singing, dancing, and romance. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies of the 1950s. <laughs> For our series on the top comedies of all time, we've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and, of course, how funny they are. Would it, for instance, tell you what kind of a doll would go for a certain kind of a guy which you wouldn't think she would do so? This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of comedic films from the 1930s to the 2000s. And they now have a lock on the door to the gym at public school 84. Number 10, Guys and Dolls. Why, it's good old reliable Nathan, 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 Nathan Detroit. The biggest game of craps has come back to town, and incorrigible gambler Nathan Detroit has to put it all together. Wait. I've been running the crap game since I was a juvenile delinquent. The only problem is, a guy can't quite ignore a doll. The guy's only doing it for some doll, some doll, some doll. The guy's only doing it for some doll. While the song and dance numbers in this film are incredible and have become classics. It sounds like a very difficult thing to do. The comedy is just as sharp and laughs abound. With great performances by Frank Sinatra, Gene Simmons, and Marlon Brando, Guys and Dolls is romance. Look, we love each other. We're going to get married. Comedy and music all dressed up to make one fine package. I play ball with you, all right? Number nine, Summer Stock. If you feel like singing, sing, tra la la, fiddle dee, tra la la. The 50s were rife with great musical numbers and dances, but Summerstock also manages to inject a whole lot of comedy into the mix as well. Believe me, in my work I know it's got to be done. This Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production follows Jane, a farm owner... We haven't had a decent crop for three years. ...who gets more than she bargained for when a troupe of actors, including her sister, uses her barnyard as a playhouse. I got a dig, 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 dig for your dinner. Dig, 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 dig. Here I'm talking to you. Gene Kelly and Judy Garland manage to put on a pithy show while never abandoning that good old 50s romance. The result is this sweet, happy, and funny little film. Harm! Harm, you pinhead! If you can hear me, don't come out! I'll slaughter you! I'll slaughter you! Oh! Harm! Once I'm up the thorny vine, the regal maiden shall be mine. Oop. Number eight, the court jester. Pellet with the poisons in the vessel with the pestle, the chalice from the palace has the brew that is true, right? Right. Talk about a tongue twister. Before there was Robin Hood Men in Tights, there was the court jester. Haven't we met before? Uh, it's not very likely, my good man. You see, I'm uh, on my way back from the Italian court. In this madcap comedy, an unwitting spy infiltrates the ranks of the king as a jester in order to usurp him and reveal the true ruler. Because I disguised as a member of that group, I saw him. Thrilling stuff, right? Beat me, kick me. I am yours. The only drawback is that Hawkins, the jester, isn't quite up to the task. But with the help of a powerful witch, he manages to hold his own and get us laughing. With your permission? Why, you swine. Number seven, Calamity Jane. Enjoy the show! Hooray! Westerns aren't just rough and tough action shoot 'em ups. And nothing proves that better than this one starring Doris Day. Over the Deadwood stages are rolling on over the plains. But with the curtains flapping and the driver is slapping the rain. She portrays the historical title character known for her skills with a gun and her tall tales. What's the matter with you? Don't you believe me? Day successfully multitasks by singing, shooting, and showing off her comedy chops in the film. That girl, she's... Oh, never mind. And while Calamity Jane's banter is certainly a high point, as with most 50s comedies, romance also finds a way in. There'll never be another man like him. Not for me. Not ever. Well, it ain't gonna be easy getting her out of my system, neither. She was so beautiful. Beautiful. Number six, 
Funny Face. Yes, thank you. Can I help you? In Funny Face, a bookshop clerk's mundane life is turned upside down when a fashion photographer makes her a tempting offer. She'd be great for us. She'd devour us all. Oh, come on, Maggie. Well, look at her. I think her face is perfectly funny. We see Joe Stockton go from shy sales girl to quality woman. Unfortunately, things don't turn out quite the way they're supposed to when she realizes that the glamorous life isn't what she expected. It's shishi and an unrealistic approach to self-impressions as well as economics. Audrey Hepburn and Fred Astaire are the perfect pair, and the film itself is elegant, timeless, and stylish. <laughs> Number 5. Roman Holiday. When it came to movies in the 1950s, comedy and romance were often mentioned in the same breath. That was a shrewd observation. A little chemistry goes a long way in highlighting a film's funnier moments. And in this romantic comedy starring Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck, the laughs come with the love. Will you help me get undressed, please? Reporter Joe Bradley sees a golden opportunity when Princess Anne escapes her royal duties to live life, and the two begin falling in love. Uh, looks like I'll have to move. A box office hit, Roman Holiday won three Oscars, and our hearts. Hey, you know, you were great back there. You weren't so bad yourself. Number four. Harvey. After you. There's just something about giant imaginary bunnies in cinema. But Harvey's not only a puka, he's also my best friend. In this fantasy comedy starring Jimmy Stewart, Elwood Dowd is a cheerful, down-to-earth kind of guy. Except for one thing, Harvey. I'd like you to meet Harvey. Harvey, you've heard me speak of Aunt Ethel Chauvinet. She's one of my oldest and dearest friends. While most people think Elwood's bunny friend is imaginary, strange things seem to be happening all around with an Oscar-winning performance from Josephine Hull. Every once in a while, I see this big white rabbit myself. And an Oscar-nominated performance from Stewart, Harvey is a naive but hilarious comedy that still holds up today. Charming place, isn't it, Harvey? The name's Henry. I, it's Henry, Harvey. Oh, just plain Henry. <laughs> Number three, the seven-year itch. Seven years we've been married, and not once have I done anything like that. Not once. What happens when a man's family goes on vacation and he meets a beautiful new neighbor? Things start heating up, of course. Yes, when it's hot like this, you know what I do? I keep my undies in the icebox. When Richard Sherman and the girl start spending time together, he starts to feel the so-called seven-year itch, a sudden need to be unfaithful. Who, me? Whatever gave you that idea. But what really makes the film adaptation of the play of the same name so memorable is Marilyn Monroe and Tom Ewell's strained chemistry, which spawns a lot of laughs and iconic moments. Oh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? Number two, Singing in the Rain. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feel, and I'm happy again. During a decade when movies needed a little something extra to draw in audiences, comes this musical comedy starring Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. I haven't been able to think of anything but you ever since. Honest? Honest. Song and Dance takes center stage in Singing in the Rain which finds its actors on the cusp of a cinematic revolution. The public is screaming for more. More what? Talking pictures, talking pictures. Set in the late 20s, things go awry for the era of silent Hollywood films when talkies come around. Well, of course we talk, don't everybody? But luckily, a flourishing romance manages to save the day, as does the flick's song and dance numbers, as well as some legendary performances. Dancing and singing in Before we unveil our pick for comedy of the 1950s, here are a few honorable mentions. I said, wait a minute! What are we going to do about her? If we 
Stop you. Stop you. Stop you. Stop you. Stop you. I won't. We might get a firecracker. We're going to heave a firecracker under that old man's bunk and bam, bam, bam. Wake up, you unpatriotic old slob. It's V.E. Day. Right. A great big welcome to all the old folk and the bunny young lads and lasses. I can't tell the difference, you know. <laughs> You'll find that most people are willing to meet you halfway. If you let them. But you don't understand, Osgood. Um, uh, I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. Number one, some like it hot. That's very interesting. The 50s were a simpler time. You could get a good laugh by just throwing on some women's clothing and a high-pitched voice. Don't you think you're a little young for that, Sonny? All right, so that gag is actually still pretty funny today. But back then, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon really did it with style. In this off-kilter comedy, musicians Joe and Jerry go undercover as women after they witness a mob hit. I tell you, Joe, they're on to us. And they're gonna line us up against the wall and... <laughs> the only problem is, life seems better than ever as the fairer sex. Osgood proposed to me. We're planning a June wedding. <laughs> and then there's Marilyn Monroe. Some like it hot, indeed. You got cold? Hey, isn't that ridiculous? Here, let me warm up a little. There. Isn't that better? Yes, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. Do you agree with our list? Actually, the whole thing is just ridiculous. <laughs> What's your favorite 1950s comedy? For I have to have the answer. For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm a scout master. Don't ever help my mother across the street.